Welcome back, friends. Lost Guy here, and it's time to put on some sunglasses, because I forgot that's a thing I do. Also, listen to this. There's no squeak. So it turns out not having a squeak is actually a good thing. <laughs> like, Jinx is mad at me because I realized, oh yeah, I should have not been procrastinating this. Since the chair doesn't squeak, I'm allowed to move around more, which allows me to emote more. When I do voice LPs. <laughs> that's great. So, I just finished recording, uh, like, 40 episodes, so 40 plus hours, of uh, the first uh, Great Ace Attorney Chronicles, and now I'm going to do, uh, and the voice LP is going to be Delta Rune 2. Delta Rune. So I'm going to do that, and we'll see how that goes, and then I'll go back to uh, Great Ace Attorney Chronicles Part 2, and do all that, and after that we will finally, because I know I've been saying this for here. We will finally decide on either doing Final Fantasy VI or doing uh, Super Mario RPG. We'll finally do that. So that's the plans for the channel. At this point, the channel is pretty much nothing but voice LPs, which they're not happening right now because uh, Jinx is really, really busy right now with work. Um, but those are what's going to be coming up. These voice LPs are going to be what's coming up. And also, Jinx has been working on the Kirby podcast, and that's going to come up, too, eventually. And, uh, what else with the channel? And then, there's going to be some more Scarf plays, and I, and things like that. Little things like that on the main channel that I'll work on. I'm going to play Yoko Taro's, uh, card game today, so we'll look at that. And, aside from voice LPs, uh, the one LP that will probably most likely definitely happen will be Elden Ring. Like, there's a good chance of Elden Ring, because we've done all the Souls games. Uh, and probably Breath of the Wild 2. That should be happening next year. Oh, and of course Kirby's game. Of course Kirby's game. Outside of the voice LPs, it'll be those things. So, last vlog uh, was why with a bunch of, like, depression stuff. And it was, like, I forget what we put, like, it was me drunk, like, why do I care about depressed people? I think is the why I put, so I could keep the series going. And we'll revisit depression stuff in the future, because there is a topic worth going over, which is the topic of, why didn't I get help? That is a good topic, but let's not go back to downers. Let's go to uppers, right? Uh, but before we get to that, uh, things happening, not in the channel, just in the world. Oh, right, Pikmin Bloom's really cute. Uh, I've been playing that. I have walked a lot. More, I've been walking a heck of a lot. I gotta make sure I keep massaging my feet because I do have some weight on me and that can lead to plantar fasciitis, which is very bad for you. It's not fun to have that. Also, uh, I need to, of course, pace myself because of the back injury as well. That's another thing to worry about. And that'll lead into the, uh, the, the topic of why this week. Before we get there, anything else to pick and bloom? There's plenty of, like, controversial political stuff and controversial stupid stuff in America. But I've just felt less wanting to talk about it, because we all see it. Like, we all see it, and I feel like you can guess where my opinion is on these things. Usually? And we can just move on from there. But if I ever just feel like talking about it, maybe I will. But not right now. Just a lot of dumb stuff. A lot of dumb stuff every week, right? Oh, one thing to mention is the infrastructure bill. Finally, but it's so, like, one trillion? Okay. Like, the bigger ambitious version could have led to a lot of good economic stuff. There were, mostly economists were on the side of Biden with all this, like, yeah, this is all good stuff. So one thing I want to say really quick, infrastructure, the problem is the argument of, uh, when it comes to the Republican side of things, like, one is, where's the money going to come from? It's like, we have plenty of money, don't you lie to me. And the other one is... And then they're like, well, then what? Well, we're just throwing money into the wind kind of thing. It's like, no, you're not throwing money into the wind. Infrastructure is an investment into the country. Because guess what? We need it anyway. Because if we don't update infrastructure, there's going to be a lot of failing bridges that are going to pop over the next couple decades. And just potholes everywhere and a bunch of other infrastructure issues. And really, honestly, Joe Biden was trying to help the Midwest a lot. He really was trying to help the Midwest. And the Midwest was like, no, nah, no, nah, screw this infrastructure bill. So um, you're going to get what you deserve with that, honestly. It's really weird how much Democrats try to help the poor people, and then the poor people vote Republican and go like, no, nah, we don't want any of that stuff. It's weird. It's freaking weird. I don't... 
Politics is bad in that it takes advantage of the fact that people really have a lot of ignorance of what's really going on. And they are willing to vote, vote against their own interests because they don't realize they're doing it. And it's very unfortunate. Politics is also just taking advantage of just different standpoints and different angles. And it can be very frustrating depending on where you're from. But I do feel like uh, the left does a lot more trying to help bring up the people from the bottom than the right does. The right just likes keeping the top in place. The right does a lot of going like, well, we help the poor, then uh, where are we going to get the money? Or how's this really going to help? And things like that. And just... Or they will blame scapegoats, like, well, all, the, all, your, all your money going to the poor is actually going to these people who are, who are scamming it. And it's very frustrating. It's extremely frustrating. It, it's really weird how much just the poor white vote is so anti all these things that actually help them. I've said this many times over the years. It's like, it's really weird how much they vote very Republican things that are actually against themselves and they don't realize it. Like, they want to do away with, like, food stamps and all these other things, because, like, they think it's, like, poor minorities take advantage of this stuff, like, when they get the majority of all those programs. It's just weird. Interesting note to go on. Okay, so now let's move on to the why. And the why is, why do I exercise? I can't really show it very well. Camera, go with that definition. There it is, right there. Doesn't show, because I got this. Pull the sleeve up, pull the sleeve up. Yeah, like, right there. Like, that feels good. Uh, why do I exercise? Why do I work out? And why do I diet? Well, for the uh, visceral, is visceral where we're just the immediate reason is obviously the back injury. Why I do is because I need to get less weight on this back because it does hurt. The nerve damage isn't all gone. There's still some nerve damage and it worries me because sometimes I feel it. I'm like, oh, geez. I do a bunch of adjusting and trying to just not have that be a thing. And the back injury is still there. But my back gets stiff more often, and it's very frustrating. And right now it's at a 3, and I hope it doesn't go up to a 4, or a 5, and so on and so forth. There's only so much the exercise and dieting will do. Eventually I'll need a back, uh, surgery to improve my back some more. It's very frustrating. And, uh... All that stuff's still being worked on uh, legally. Um, but that's one reason. Reason one, why do I exercise, is because of my back. That's the other one. Reason number two is uh, vanity. Because it does feel cool to be strong, to have like muscle. It really does feel cool. Like, not today, but sometimes there are these days where from a good workout, my arms just feel tight, like in just like a I feel buff kind of way. And it's really cool. It's a, it's a, it's a nice vanity feel. Good for the ego. It definitely is good for the ego. And also just, you know, less chin is good for the ego as well. Like, I was 210 at the start of the year, and I am at 192 right now. I'm hoping to lose two more pounds by the end of the year, which will be a struggle because of Thanksgiving and Christmas. Thanksgiving is a time to gorge. Christmas is a time to gorge. Like, we have the fixins. Like, we, there is so much food during Thanksgiving and Christmas, so I don't know. And then, of course, Halloween, a lot of candy happened. I've already had a, I've had a couple candy bars today, which is not good. I'm gonna, wait. No, I've had one. Thank God. Yeah, I was gonna have two, but I only had one. So here's an interesting thing real quick when it comes to dieting. When you have a craving, if you get to the point, so what you're supposed to do actually, which is so weird, is your body's seeking this craving. You go to it, you get a hold of it, don't actually eat it. Your body feels the reward of you actually just having it than actually eating it. The problem is, of course, once you've got it, you want to eat the dang thing. And I discovered this thing, like, it's very weird how that works, where, for the most part, I'm like, oh, I really feel like a candy bar. I'll go find one, I'll grab one, and then I'll just hold on to it for a little bit, and then the craving goes away. I'm like, oh, snap, okay, that actually works. And then I'm good. Today was too fast. I'm like, it's a fun size, screw it, munch, 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 and yeah. Like, for sure. Like, there's a lot of really good candy out there I haven't had in a while. I've only had ice cream, like, once or twice this year. Yeah, once or twice this year. That's it. And, and it's just a soft serve from McDonald's. I haven't had, like, Cold Stone or, like, a pint or anything. Man, 
When I was younger, I would put down an entire pint. And I just... This is another thing psychologically when it comes to dieting. You just realize, you know, you should just stop at a point. You should just stop eating at a point. Like eating a pint of ice cream. The problem with eating a pint of ice cream is halfway through that damn pint, you already, your taste buds are already numb to it. This is a thing that happens with anything. Your taste buds get numb to a flavor after a while. And so I was like, why don't I just put the pint away and enjoy some more tomorrow instead? And that's something I realized eventually. I was like, okay, yeah, if I get a pint of ice cream, I could have that amazing flavor of ice cream on the daily. Just like, just a scoop. Not a scoop, but just like, like a, a spoonful or whatever. Every day. Instead of just putting it all down in one go. And so that's what I would do. I uh, started to do was like, all right, well, not this year, but last year or the year before, I forget. When I was doing really good before the car accident happened, um, it was that. Now I just haven't done ice cream at all. But it was, it was like, yeah, I'll just have like a spoonful and I'm good. I'm good for like a couple days and then I'll do it again and again and there you go. And I can make a pint of, of vanilla ice cream just last for like a couple months. And vanilla is amazing. Screw anyone who doesn't think it is. Uh, it's not boring. It is amazing. The thing is, we have utilized one of the most amazing things ever so much, people think it's boring. Which is everyone else's fault. It's amazing. Um, yeah, dieting. And then it's just trying to understand and learn, like, protein and fat and carbs and all that stuff and everything. And it's still a weird business. Because... I talked to a, a medical person. They're like, you should go on keto. I'm like, I don't really feel that. It doesn't feel very healthy to do it that way. A gradual loss feels a lot better than doing this, this flash loss like that. That is just burning away. Uh, it, it burns a lot of things. It burns. It's burning part of your muscle. It's burning a lot of things for keto. And I understand the principle of keto. It's better than Atkins. I'll tell you that much. The principles of keto is way better than the principles of Atkins. But the way they wanted me to go about it was very unhealthy, and that's my problem with it. There is a healthy way to do keto, I believe, but it is not cheap, and I ain't going to spend that money. Here's another reason for men to lose weight, and that is, I forget how many pounds, but if the thing is, we're, we're hitting in a, a certain rating here. And if you're younger, did you, okay, I don't know. Okay, okay, anyway. When you get fatter, you're like the, the kind of like you're like Michelin Man, where like you, like you gain fat all over, like it's all over, all over. You you gain extra layers of of fat and skin, right? That's everywhere. That includes the crotch region. So, and this is the ladies who are listening. You 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 might not understand. Um, down there, as you gain weight, you have less dick. <laughs> like because the fat is growing in that area too and so as you lose weight you gain more dick so on that front as well that's not a bad reason to lose weight I'm going to make that argument if you need more dick you can lose weight for that as well and I will admit there is room for, for more here like I definitely got Quite a bit of flesh down there. Uh, hiding. Other flesh. That's how I'm going to word that. But there is. There is more there. There's more potential. More potential dick down there. <laughs> oh god. Uh, reason, another reason. Why exercise. Or getting. Uh, or exercise and diet. Another reason for that. For me. Why do I do it? Is you do feel healthier. You do feel better. I definitely feel stronger. I feel faster. I just feel healthier in general. It's good for the ego. I feel better because of that. Something I need to work on is cardio. And I'm just scared of it, though, because cardio does utilize your back quite a bit. So I'm scared of that. But I should, like, I can walk long distances now. I used to not be able to walk more than five minutes. Oh, okay, in the beginning, I could only walk maybe 10 steps. <clears throat> that was after the surgery. I'm at the point where I can walk maybe a couple thousand. And, but I still hit a limit eventually after a bunch of walking. And I'm just scared of running. I'm scared of jogging. I'm scared of those kind of things. And also just... 
It, it does do a number on your back and, of course, a number on your knees and things like that. So I am scared of that, but I need to get some more cardio going because I go up enough stairs and I am winded. Maybe I just need to walk a lot more stairs. Maybe that's what I need to do. There is a spot at work because of how leveled the place is, the plant is, where there are 125 steps going up and down. We don't use that. We usually drive a truck around. But I could take those steps. I could do that. That's something I can do. Dear God, it's not a lot of steps, though. The only, the only thing that makes me paranoid about it is, you know, if I trip, that's a lot of rolling. Uh, the other thing with that is, uh, we do have rattlesnakes on the plant, so something to worry about as well. I would That would be really not good to run into a rattlesnake. Uh, another reason why, I don't know, necessarily it's not ego, um, but let's say this for fourth, fifth reason. Uh, why I work out, why I exercise is, again, kind of back number one, strength. I love being strong. It is just fun. Okay, so I can no longer be as strong as I used to be, but I can still make myself fit. Pre-car accident, 315 bench. I will never be able to do that again in my life because I'm not willing to risk it. I'm just too scared of my back injury to do that. Same thing goes for, like, deadlifts. Like, it's recommended I don't even do deadlifts because of my back injury. And that's unfortunate. Same thing for cleans and all that. Like, maybe I can do a light amount, but I ain't gonna go any further than that. So I can't be as powerful as I used to be, but that was the reason why I did it. I loved benching heavy. I loved it a lot. I really liked feeling strong. I enjoyed that. I enjoyed being able to curl 50s. I love that. Like, it was so nice to do that. It was such, it's not a high, but it's just this ego boost thing kind of thing. Like, I just feel like, a, like I'm getting better because I'm able to be strong. And that was cool. In the end, though, is my core was still weak, though, because I didn't understand core back then. Like, I understand core more now. Problem is, uh, it doesn't matter. I understand core more now in that I'm not able to get that strong anymore, so I can't utilize that. Because... You can have really strong arms, but if you don't have a strong core with your arms, you can only do so much, is what I eventually learned. So, those are why I exercise. Those are, these are all very positive reasons, and also uh, battling negative reasons. Battling an injury, that's why I'm doing it. Uh, for ego, and of course you can get an inflated ego and be a jerk about it, and I've tried not to be that. Like, thankfully, being a larger person, when I see a 400-500 pound person at the gym... I am happy for that. It's actually very rare to see people who are disgusted at that. Uh, at least at the gyms I've gone to. I haven't been to a gym, by the way, in a very long time. Well, since the pandemic, I haven't been to the gym. Well, since the pandemic and Carson. They happened around the same time. Um, and I just haven't been to a gym in a long time. It's a lot of more uh, calisthenics now and cardio kind of thing now. Well, not really cardio. More... Walking. Just walking. I don't know if you can call cardio walking cardio, but it's more calisthenics and more lightweight now. So there's no reason to go to a gym but when it's just that. And and also just being very careful. Being very careful about all my movements and everything because one bad turn could be it. Like, I'm very paranoid about it. I have really bad PTSD over my injury. So I'm maybe a little too careful about it, but I just, I don't want it to get worse. Simple as that. It's like you got one life left in a game. You got like you don't want to blow it. You're gonna play a little more carefully, aren't you? And so that's what I'm at right here. <laughs> Dark Souls version is you got one hit to die. You got no estuses, and you are very far from a bonfire. I think that's everything. So it's it's a lot of positives or battling negative things. So there's a more positive episode there with why I exercise, and of course there's another reason I put. I don't know, Jinx will cut it out. I I thought it was funny to talk about it, and it is it is a viable reason. Like, if all these other things don't convince you to exercise, I think that's not a bad reason if you have, if you're having an issue there. I'm giggling so much about that. I'm such a child. I don't think I'm an adult yet. I, I pay taxes. Um, I, I have loans. I have savings. I have retirement. I have all these things. I still don't feel like an adult because I'm such a child, I guess.
that's a topic I go over. It's like, why do I still feel like a child or something like that? Or why don't I feel like an adult? That can be another topic in the future. So I think that's everything. So that right there is the vlog. I had fun. Hope you have fun watching. And that's what's all about it. Having fun. Like, come by and see you next time. Just noticed uh, the sleeping curve. It's like, ah! That is not a pretty looking mouth right there. See you.